who are doing our Power Automate session today. And Malik, do you want to start with our introductions? Um, sure. Hi, my name is Malik Warhat. I'm the Manager of Product Development and Innovation at uh, for iTrack. I have been working in a development capacity for the last 25 years. Uh, 15 of those years have been focused mainly on Microsoft Dynamics. I've been with iTrack for about 10 years. Hello, my name is Diane Fritz, and I am a senior consultant with iTrack. I have been with iTrack for over 11 years in a variety of roles. My main focus is the implementation of iTrack, specific modules, and the customization of workflows and Power Automate. I would also like to introduce and thank Kareen, uh, who is our in-house consultant in sales support and our moderator for this session. So this is a level 200 demonstration, an overview of Power Automate. If you have an understanding of workflow processes and dynamics or Power Automate flows, you'll be able to follow our demonstration today. If not, please feel free to stay as you will gain some insight into how Power Automate flow can work with dynamic with iTrack 365. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat window and we will get to them at the end of our demonstration. If you could please turn off your video, so that's number two, and meet yourself. That's number three on our little screenshot. We will start our session. So I try Power Automate. Power Automate allows you to include powerful workflow automation directly in your apps with uh, no code or very little code um, that connects hundreds of popular apps and services, including iTrack. So similar to the existing workflow that everybody knows today in Dynamics 365, um, it's similar, but it's point and click and a lot simpler to use. So when to use Power Automate versus uh, the workflow processes? So currently, when we think of Power Automate, we want to use it for what we cannot currently do in workflows. So Microsoft continues to develop Power Automate for functionality is expected to be completed by the fall of this year. So they're still currently in development. So iTrack 365 add-ins that we have enhanced over the years that you currently have available in workflows will also need to be developed for Power Automate once Microsoft has added capabilities. And we anticipate this development to be completed for the end of the year. So Microsoft, as we said in point two, has to complete their development. And then all the extra things that we have created over the years in that have, we use in workflow processes, we then have to add into Power Automate as well so that we can use those in Power Automate. So when to use Power Process Workflow Processes versus Power Automate. So we've tried to define when to use which. So I'm going to go over uh, Dyna Dynamics 365 workflows on the left here. So we still want to use them for our email notifications, for forms, training tasks, competencies, and so on. So our action. Grab. So our action based uh, on conditions in the form. So for example, a field indicates a form is confidential. We update the ownership and assignment to, to a confidential team. I track specific items such as sharing the form at certain statuses and creating other I track records such as a child form. And then calling on user defined fields such as text and list fields. So that's what we're talking about are specific items that we have created as iTrack add ons in the um, workflow processes that we still need to develop once Dynamic has finished their development. So, when to use Power Automate flows, and we're going to show you some of these today. So, when we want to do messages in Teams, that we're going to use Power Automate flows. When we want to send Microsoft team cards, when we want to leverage Microsoft bots, uh, either items in Teams such as creating a channel, when we want to send text messages or push notifications, when we want to model driven human processes such as approvals, other items typically that we cannot currently manage in a standard workflow, and very simple integrations with iTrack as well. So now we want to show you Power Automation, Power Automate Flow in action. 
So the first thing I want to do is just review uh, a flow that we have set up with uh, um, one of our process flows, so one of our forms, and the different steps that we're going to take. So this uh, would be very similar to um, a workflow, um, but then our outcomes are very different. So we have first defined um, our form status and our form type. So along, we're going to do two different paths. We're going to do along the left, and then we're going to be review along the right. So we have, if the form status is preview, and the form type is incident, and the form classification is not equal injury. So as you can see, as Malek said, we just simply drag and drop these dynamics functions. So if the form status is equal to the form type, so the form status is equal to preview. And as you can see right now, we still have to use the GUIDs. Um, that is something we expect that dynamics will improve upon. Uh, if form type is equal to, and this is our incident GUID, and form classification does not contain injury. And then what we can do is we have um, actions that we do. So if yes and if no. So if yes, we want to post a message to Teams. So if I just expand upon this, we want to go to the team of iTrack A to C, and we want to go to the channel of incident team, and then we're going to post a message. And within that message, we can draw upon again those dynamic fields that we can include upon. If I keep scrolling down, we then are going to have a status of analysis. So the form status equals analysis, the form type equals incident, and the actual risk equals 16. So we're just expanding upon some of our conditions. And then we're going to have if yes. If yes, send a text message to the assigned to and create an approval. So we're going to create an approval. And with that approval, we're going to post it in Teams to the HSC approval team. And then once that team uh, receives that approval, we have to wait for a response. And we're going to sit and we're going to wait for a response. And then we're going to do an action once we receive a response for that approval. So if yes, we're going to update the form. So this is quite different than what we're used to seeing in a workflow. So we can show our advanced options here. This is quite long. So this is our form. And we can see, you can see these are all of our fields that we would normally see in a form. And we can... I keep scrolling, I'll find my field. So I'd say if, uh, if the approval is yes, update the yes, no, to field to yes. So we could do other things as well, but I've kept this fairly simple. I'm just saying if it's approved, update that yes, no, to field to yes. And then if it was no, update the yes, no, to field to no. So what we'll do is we're going to take a look at those different items that I've just gone over. Uh, to see what um, what their outcome was. So I'm just going to bring over my teams. So I had said at the preview status, we are going to have a team message in the incident team channel. So this is my team here, and I have an incident team channel. And we're just going to post a message, just a very simple message. So it says, at malloc, at Diane, a new incident 1072 has been entered and is in the preview status, uh, is in the status of preview. So it's just a very simple message that we can just post um, into the Teams channel. We could post this to a user or we can post this to a channel that you could have multiple users belong to. We then set an analysis status. We're going to have a message to the approval team. Now you can see this is bolded. Because uh, nobody has clicked on it yet, or I haven't, I, sorry, I have not clicked on it yet. So I go into here, and now I can see we have an approval. So there are multiple members to this team, and my wait condition is waiting for one person to approve it. We have incident 1072 has been identified with a risk of 16. Please review the details and confirm if they are sufficient and approve or reject the incident. So I have a link to the incident. So we'll just simply click on that link. Okay, so that should open our link to the form, and then we just either approve or reject it. And if we click on either, we get a comment box. Um, you can just 
please proceed. Investigation, and then we can just submit our approval. And the last item that we had sent was a text message. Um, so I'm just gonna show you that. To my PowerPoint, I just took some screen some screenshots. Um, an incident, I get the push notification and then in my text message as well. So the incident 1072 has been identified with the risk of uh, 16 is in the status of analysis. So we're able to send that message to the assigned to and then our, so our assigned to user has to have um, their mobile phone number. Okay, so we're just going to go back. And we're just going to go and look at um, the right side of our path. Roll over here. So on the right side, we have the status equals preview, and the type the form type equals incident, and classification equals injury. So this is very specific to the injury classification. If yes, we're going to post a team card. So not a message, but this time we're posting a card, which is uh, quite a bit different. And if no, we don't have an action that happens. And then we have if the status equals analysis and form type equals incident and classification equals injury. So if yes, start and wait for an approval. So this approval is different. Our first approval was going uh, to the team. This approval is going by email. And um, we, we have to decide when we're doing approvals, which type of approval we're going to do. Are we going to do approvals through Teams or are we gonna do approvals through emails? And the reason we have to make that distinction is we don't want to do both. If we got an approval through our Teams channel and we also got an approval through our email, and as a team, uh, I selected approval through the team channel and Malik sent, uh, clicked reject uh, five minutes later through his email. We've just done conflicting things and our form has just been um, updated by myself and then changed now by Malik. So we have to pick one path for the, for the approval uh, on how we're going to manage it. Um, and our Power Automate flow makes us make that distinction. So we can have different types of approvals at different statuses or under different conditions. Our injury is going to be an approval by email. Our non-injury classifications are going to be an approval through our teams. But we can't have both at uh, the same condition. So we have to pick one or the other. So what we'll do now is we're going to go back into our Teams channel. And we're going to look at our injury. And this is what a Teams card looks like. So this is our Teams card. Um, we can customize a team card. It has a nice image in it. And then it has um, a view. It will have a custom button in there. Unfortunately, my buttons aren't working today for me right now. Um, so it just has our buttons in there that we can click. And then um, we also had sent an email. And here's the email that was sent. So they also have approve and reject links. I included in the description. Um, it is included um, that Darren was not tethered properly. We're working at height. Select if you approve or reject this process flow. If you reject, um, the form will move back to preview for additional detail. So we reject this. We move the form back a status. Um, so to recap, um, Power Automate allows point and click simplicity to define criteria. Um, there's new options such as defining a message to post to Teams. Um, there's also several hundred connectors, so you can also integrate, you know, iTrack with SharePoint or with your local uh, SQL database or with really hundreds of other other things. So what our Power Automate flow did today was we posted a message to the Teams channel, we sent an approval to a Teams channel, and we sent a text message to your phone. 
we sent a Teams card in Teams, and we sent an email approval. So with, with the approval, with everything else that we did, it's completely customizable by the user, uh, completely configurable by the user. So the fields that we chose, you could choose different fields and, and show different data in there and have um, other links in there as well. And with approve, reject, it doesn't have to be a simple um, yes, no. You can also have it um, have other options in there. So approve and maybe have a list of five guys who you want to assign it to after you've approved it. So the possibilities are almost endless what you can do with, with uh, Power Automate. So the future of Power Automate and workflows. So for today, for our current clients, we probably want you guys to continue using workflows for the current capabilities, for the current iTrack capabilities, and use Power Automate flows for the new functionality. So we're hoping by the end of the year, um, Microsoft will have all the options that we have in workflows migrate over to Power Automate, and we'll have uh, our custom workflow activities migrated over as well.